This video will be part three of this little uh, clock GPS kit assembly. So far in video one we did the clock, video two the GPS receiver, and now I'm going to do the work required to mount the front and rear panels. There's a bunch of accessories here and that will mount the clock because the clock fits in front panel. So the contents of what was in the bag are two switches that will go here. One's marked power, one's mar not marked at all. Uh, two push buttons will go here. The nine pin DIN connector will go back here. They provided a male and a female power connector. That's very thoughtful of them. Power goes back here. Four standoffs that will replace these screws. Four pan head screws. Black to match the case and then two sets of four are the front and rear uh, panels and four rubber feet. Did I mention that? The proper hole for installation of a switch is really two holes. One hole directly below and much smaller or directly above and in both cases small and this ring washer if you will locks the switch shaft in the vertical position that keeps the switch from rotating around left and right and we'll do any good to have a switch this way So I, I've just gotten rid of that. I, I, first of all, the, it has a bent over tang on it. Tighten that against the, uh, the, the panel. Second of all, if you do install it, it obscures the word power. The correct installation of a switch like this is one of the nuts on the front plate on the front side of the plate. One nut in the back and between the two nuts it is the plate of course and on the back is the lock washer. What you're supposed to do is adjust the amount of stick out you want and that's normally just a, maybe a turn on the shaft. Then the switch is tightened from the rear nut. That way you don't put a nut driver or <laughs> worse a pair of diagonal plier, a, bit, a pair of uh, needle nose pliers and scratch the paint. So with the switch installed, this rear nut is tightened. That way all the switches have a uniform stick out. And of course it also accommodates different thicknesses of panels. The final tightening is done with this very small open-ended wrench from behind. That way you don't mar the paint or the decals. This screw was removed the other three are still in. was removed and it's replaced with one of these. Now the reason I'm going into so much detail on the front panel 
as I can't find any instructions on the assembly of the case. An easy way to install these little standoffs is to take one of the black round-headed screws, screw it in, and then use your screwdriver to tighten the standoff. Then remove the screw. The reason I say that is that you can't get a nut driver down over the hex. And beware of the fact you may loosen up your rear screws. Now before you set this plate on the clock, make sure to remove the protective uh, plastic. Once you install the plate, you won't be able to remove that plastic. So it stays on forever or you end up disassembling the clock. And always, when I say always, uh, I'm talking about some device that has multiple screws or bolts. Don't tighten the first this one, the second one. Don't tighten anything until you get all the bolts in place. Nothing worse than putting 16 bolts in a flange, tightening eight of them and finding out that you can't get the rest in the holes. You end up loosening all the ones you've tightened. And a proper pipe flange is torqued, so now you've torqued it and you're going to untorque it. Now we're tightening these into plastic threads, so don't muscle them too much. Just make sure they're well and truly tight. So there we go. It's a nicely done front clock. And all of the connections that we have to do to the clock are here and here. And the push buttons are in the back. Now I'm going to wire these push buttons to these push buttons. So I've made some progress. Let me say something about these uh, case halves. They are identical. Both have the lines in the top but their tongue and groove. One end is a, one one side is a tongue, the other side's a groove. And the only thing you have to do is make sure you put the uh, tongue on the grooved side. Now they recommend doing this with the screws loose. I've got this ribbon cable with what they they're people referring to as DuPont connectors. All of these pins are designed to accept these connectors. Since these pins are on a tenth inch center and these little plastic squares are a tenth of an inch across from side to side, they line up adjacent to each other. There is, in the uh, clock kit instructions, a color code to be used to connect the uh, clock to the GPS. And it's uh, red, black, blue, and green. So I tore, I stripped this apart until I got those colors. I'm using red and black for power. That's also what they use for the GPS connector, red and black. And since I tore this strip into pieces <laughs> to get at the red and black and whatever, I had some stray odd pieces and I assigned these to the buttons. In my case it's yellow and orange with a brown common. Pick, 
there is no convention. You can see as far as the switches go, I, I've elected to use brown as a common. And so, I don't know if you can see it or not, I made a, a connection between the two switches with the brown jumper. It's easier to make a connection between the terminals than it is to put two pins, two male pins on one female. The only thing left is the power connections. I intend to uh, take a red wire from here to the power switch and then cut this dew point jumper and that will be the other terminal on the switch. QRP Labs supplied a matching power connector and so using the bench See, that's the center connector. That's the ground connector. You notice this connection over here, it's not connected. But, nor is it connected to this one or this one. Watch what happens when I pull it out. So because there's three connectors here, and they change state when this is plugged in, in the case there's a switch inside of here. So when you determine which one of these is the center pin, do it with a plug inserted. My last connections will be two red wires attached to this toggle switch. Now, you see a lot of this. These are three terminal toggle switches. So either the center is common, and switch action causes either this and this to be closed, or in another position, there only are two, this and this. So it's a single pole double throw switch. So which is which? Well, on these switches the closed connection is always opposite the bat handle. Right now these two are open. Now these two are closed. These two are now open. They close now. Draw a line straight through the bat handle and it will tell you which pair is closed. Looking at the front of the clock kit, it just says power. It doesn't say up or down. They do make mention of in the instructions that in the United States that's off when it's down, and that's on when it's up. And this is in the United States. This is the way we turn our lights off. This is the way most of us, looking around the workbench, things that have toggle switches, down is off. Apparently, in other parts of the world, and this thing is sold internationally, it's sourced from Turkey, the convention is different. So they didn't mark up or down. It's up to you to decide what country you live in and if you know the convention of your country. Or just reach over and turn the lights off and on and see which way the toggle switch goes. I want it to be off 
when it's down, on when it's up, so that means I'll use the lower two terminals. Those of you who were watching closely, you'll notice that this has been inverted from the way I had it originally. I powered it up without the GPS and this is what you should see in any event this is the way the thing gets installed in this case and of course when I inverted the display module I had it or change left and right. This is the clock manual. The GPS connections are color coded. This is the GPS manual. So they're not color coded. So this is red. This is black. TXD, the GPS is the transmitter, that is of the signal to the uh, clock. So here's called TXD, here it's called RXD, this is received, see so pay attention to the little arrows. So this is blue. Even though this is a T, and here is an R. And then the one pulse per second is green. With everything powered down, this should be red. The next one should be black. Blue, and lastly green.